Alrighty, peeps, let's do some examples today for a new topic that is called cross sections. Boom, there it is. All right, um, we're going to start with a problem. And what's that problem going to look like? We're going to have some new vocabulary. First of all, cross sections and new vocabulary. Let's start with the question. So we're going to say, what is the volume? of the solid whose cross sections are squares perpendicular to the x-axis Or f of x is equal to x squared from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. All right, that was a question. All right, friends, uh, let's read through this. We got some vocabulary. Uh, let's focus on taking that apart. So first of all, it says, what is the volume of the solid whose cross sections? And we're going to all identify a cross section here once we get a graph of this. They are squares, and it says that they're perpendicular to the x-axis. Let me just tell you what that means. If it's perpendicular to the x-axis, I'll talk about in terms of conceptually what that means, but I'm going to tell you this means to me integrate with respect to x. Simple as that, which tells me how my function needs to look as well. If it's at perpendicular to the y-axis, then I would have to integrate with respect to y, because that's just how my shape is going to be stacked up. Okay, so let's check out uh, what we have here. First of all, let's graph this right here. So f of x is equal to x squared. That's going to look like a parabola thingy. Yikes. There we go. And we're looking at it from 0 to 2. So maybe here's like one, maybe here's two. So this is the region that we are building our cross sections from. So normally what we've been doing is we've been like rotating this around something. Maybe we would rotate this around, I don't know, we'd have, or maybe we would like rotate this around the x-axis. Um, we could rotate it around this line right here. Um, but we're not rotating today. We're gonna have a new, new concept that is called a cross section. And let's go ahead and let's draw our cross sections here. And to do that, we're going to have to draw a three-dimensional graph. So if you'd imagine my hand being the graph, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt it down, and I'm going to draw my graph like that. So this is going to be my y-axis right now. And I'm still going to go straight across for my x-axis. But now I'm going to have this thing, and I'm going to draw this dotted, this is going to be like my z-axis. So I have three dimensions now. I have an x, a y, and a z. And again, if you think of the graph, this is the x-y graph, what I'm doing is I'm rotating it like this, and I'm looking at it from really a top view where I can see a third dimension at this point. Okay, so let's put this graph on here. So it's going to be going to look something like this. And we're talking about from 0 to 2, so I'm going to call this 1 and 2. And so we're going to go, I'm going to draw it out there a little bit. All right, so here's our region that we're talking about. Let's draw some cross sections. Now it's going to tell us the shape of our cross section right here. It says this cross sections are squares. So what does that mean? Well, let's build these squares right here. And I'm going to run out of room, which makes me angry. Um, but it is what it is. I'm not starting over. So let's draw a few squares here. So the cross sections are built like this. This would be like the bottom of a square. Would be determined by this distance. Let's draw this cross section. Boom. There's the square. So the bottom, this is basically going to tell you how it's going to define basically the square. If this is the bottom of the square, I know I need to go up that same height, over that same height, down that same height. I'll draw a few more. And these each of these is a cross section. So I'm going to label that. This is a cross section. 
All right, so these are going to go all the way, and this would go all the way off the screen. I apologize for that. Um, but if you would imagine this shape, it looks something like this. It would look like this on the end. It would be a square, and it looks like it's going to look something like this. But again, there's all these different cross sections inside this. That's a horrible shape. Yeah, I've made worse. Um, so it looks like this. Boom, and we'll do a dotted line right there. And again, here's another cross section. Boom, up to there. Boom, boom, there's another cross section. All right, anyway, so we're going to figure out the volume of these cross sections, like all of them together. And obviously what we're going to do is we're going to integrate, just like we did. We had disks before that were circles, and we integrated across to get all the disks. The only difference now is that we have squares that we're going to use. Um, so let's jot this down here. So let's say now... The disks, and I'm going to put in quotes, the disks are squares. All right, we're going to say we just use the same method to find volume. just a different shape. So in other words, before we had disks, we found circles, and we integrated across. The only difference right now is that I'm going to use these squares to find this volume. All right, so here's how you find the volume of any um, thing with cross sections. Volume is going to be equal to this area from A to B, whatever it's going to be, of A of X dx. So this is a of x is the area as a function. Because the areas are changing the whole time, what we're going to do is write a function for it. We're going to integrate across it. That would include every single one of these squares, which is going to give me the exact volume. So in this case, and I'm this dx right here, I have dx because it says perpendicular to the x-axis. As soon as it says that, you know you're integrating with respect to x. And what it means by perpendicular to the x-axis, it means it's moving across this way. See how these are perpendicular right here? They make right angles. That's why we're integrating going across on the x. So specifically with this problem, my volume would be equal to the integral. And we're going to go from, it says, 0 to 2. And we'd have to write a function. What's the area of these squares. Well, obviously they're all changing, but this distance right here on the bottom is going to be um, x squared. That's y equals x squared. So therefore, the bottom length is x squared. If I drew one of those cross sections, it would be x squared on this side, x squared on this side, and as a function, the area of that square would be x to the fourth. So I'm going to say this would be x squared squared dx, which is equal to from 0 to 2 of x to the fourth dx. Okay, and we can integrate this. We're going to end up with 1 fifth x to the fifth from 0 to 2, which is going to be 32 fifths in the end. All right, um, so what do we want to take away from this problem? First of all, just introducing the idea of a cross section. What's a cross section? Here's one right here. This is the square that's one cross section of this three dimensional shape. If you could take a machete and go and slice it right through, what you'd see is a cross section on, actually, you'd see it on both sides of it. So, how do we find the volume of cross sections? We use the same methods we always have, except now we're just doing the integral of the area of the shape instead of either disks or washers. Otherwise, it's very much the same idea. All right, so let me erase the board. We'll do one more example for these.
<clears throat> All right, friends, let's do our last problem for cross sections here. And it's going to be this. So we're going to find the volume of the solid. whose base is bounded by the circle, I'm going to actually just say equation. The equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Oops, sorry, I'm going to erase that. Um, and then I'm going to say comma, whose cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis and are semi circles. All right, friends, I'm getting crazy here. I'm changing the shape. I had squares again. I don't want to do one with squares again. You guys did one with squares. Let's do it with semicircles, which means um, I might not get the answer in the end of this problem, but I want to see, want you to see it when it's a different shape. Okay, first of all, let's draw, let's make sure we're understanding what's happening here. So when the volume of a solid whose base is bounded by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4. So I said before this is a circle. Circles have equations x squared plus y squared would be equal to r squared, where the center in this case would be 0, 0. So in this case, I know my r is equal to 2. All right, uh, whose cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis. All right, so that tells me, like when I have cross sections, I'm going to integrate with respect to y. And I'll show you exactly what that means conceptually in a picture here shortly. And it says there's semicircles. All right, so we're going to have to deal with making semicircles. Let's make a graph of this. First of all, if I was to make a graph of y equals, or x squared plus y squared equals 4, we got a radius of 2. Looks something like this. There's my attempt at a circle. Come on, baby. There we go. A circle-ish. All right, uh, let's do, let's draw a three-dimensional graph, though. Remember what we're doing, if my hand's like this, orientation-wise, we're taking it and we're looking at it from a three-dimensional approach where we'll now have a vertical dimension. So to do that, I'm just going to take my y-axis, I'm going to draw a diagonal for that, and then I'm still going to stay straight across from my x, and then I'm going to have, like, this z-axis going vertically. And that goes down through the bottom as well. I'll do it dotted. So my plane, normally we look at it like this with two dimensions, now turning it into a three-dimensional plane by just turning that right there. All right, so what does this look like then? Well, um, let's draw our circle. It goes from, I'm going to say this is 2, this is 2. Notice how when you draw like the tick marks, I go the same like angle as like the axis. So then like I'm going like this, and here I go straight across. It just looks a little bit cooler. Uh, like that, and I like looking cool. Um, all right, so we're going like that. Let's draw our circle. This is going to hurt um, because I know this is going to turn out like garbage, but it is what it is. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Not horrible. I've drawn much worse than that. Okay, let's take it. Let's make sense of this now. Here, the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis. Okay, here's the y-axis, and perpendicular to the y-axis is like going in this direction. So, because it's going to make a right angle with the y-axis. That's why it's perpendicular to the y-axis. Mathematically, what that means, though, we're going to integrate with respect to y. Okay, so it says that we have semicircles. So, this is like the bottom, and the semicircle then, my radius is going to be about like that. So here's my semicircle for that. And like here in the middle, it would have like a big semicircle. And like on these ends here, 
they would have like little semicircles, and we kind of get an idea what this is going to look like. And actually, I think this is going to end up really being kind of like a sphere. Um, and again, I just kind of think it's going to look like this, where we'd have like a sphere uh, kind of look to it. I don't know how this is getting worse here. I should just not say anything else. All right, there we go. Anyways, it's kind of like a sphere. Um, we don't have to have a perfect picture. We're just using that as a visual. Okay, but we, what we need to do is we're going to need to write an equation for the area of the cross section. And my equation needs to be written in a specific way because I have to integrate with respect to y. So that means, long story short, step one, I need to solve for x in this one. So if I'm going to solve for x, I would subtract x squared. I'd square, no, y squared, and then I'd square root. So I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 minus y squared. All right, and the plus or minus just takes care of like both sides. Um, so it would take care of this side. The negative would basically be this side. All right, so let's write an equation for the area of our semicircles. I'm going to call that a of x. So what's the area of, our, of a semicircle? It's going to be pi r squared. Well, what's r? Well, that's going to be, let me draw one of those in right there. That r is going to be this distance, just from here all the way out to the outside, which is obviously changing each time. But this is going to be equal to this equation. And I can really just use the positive version of that, because we're just going to stick to the right. I could use negative, but be, quite honestly, I'm going to square it in the end. So the radius is going to be x equals 4 minus y squared. So the area of one of the cross sections is going to be pi r squared. Or in this case, it's going to be pi 4 minus y squared squared. Okay, this is basically our cross section function. That's not really a word, but I just made it up. Um, it's just an equation that would give me the area of any cross section on here. So if I plugged in 1, it would give me when y is 1, that's the area of that cross section. This will give me the area of any of those cross sections. All right, um, what is going to happen then? Oops, I should have put this in square root. Okay, and then when I square this, I'm going to get a of x is going to be pi times, this actually ends up being a super nice 4 minus y squared because when I square the radical, it's just going to become a regular. But again, I'm off, <clears throat> I'm off my... Uh, problem that I had, so I don't have anything written down, so I could be completely off track right now. Who knows? Uh, let's do this then. So we want to find the volume of this. So my volume then is just going to be the integral, and we're going to integrate. In this case, we said the radius is 2, so I'm going to go y is negative 2 to 2. I'm going to pull this pi right out front, and actually I made a mistake. What mistake did I make, friends? Well, the mistake I made and this is my fault for going off my note, or going separate, is I have to divide by 2 because these are semicircles. So I would put this over 2, which is not going to be that big of a deal. Um, so then I'm ready to do volume. So our volume then is going to be equal to pi. I'm going to take that pi out. I'm going to take that pi over 2 out because those are both constants. And then I'm going to integrate. All right, what am I going to integrate from? From negative 2 to positive 2 because I'm going this direction. Why am I going that direction? Because I'm integrating with respect to y. Why am I integrating with respect to y? Because it says my cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis. All right, um, so this is going to end up being 4 minus y squared dy. We could go through, you could integrate all that. I'm not going to go through that process. We're, again, we're going to go from negative 2 to 2. We're going to say it equals something. You're going to figure that out. It's all set up in arithmetic at that point. All right, so what do we need to take away from this? First of all, definition of cross sections. If you have a three-dimensional shape, you take a machete, chop it. What you're looking at, if you're perpendicular to either the x or y axis, you're looking at a cross section at that point. In order to find volume of cross sections, of all the cross sections, what we're going to do is we're going to do the volume is equal to the integral over my whatever upper and lower limits are of the area of that shape in terms of a function. So step one, we're going to write the area of one cross section in terms of a function. Step two, integrate over that entire region. All right, so that's all I have for cross sections. Go ahead on to those
Classwork problems tonight, and good luck on those, friends.